to Tech Brothers with Amit. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How to disable all the triggers in SQL Server database? So the triggers can be enabled or disabled depending upon the requirement. And let's consider that we have created some triggers on this sales database and we want to disable them before we load the data by using SSIS package. And after once we are done, we can enable them. So in this video, we are going to learn how to disable all the triggers in this uh, database. So I have two triggers uh, here. I, uh, I have a trigger on the customer table and uh, this is the name of the trigger TRG customer. Then uh, I have another trigger on salesperson and uh, that's the TRG insert salesperson. To take a look on the uh, status uh, if the triggers are enabled or disabled, you can use uh, sys triggers table uh, system view sorry and uh, you can use uh, sys tables uh, to gather and uh, then uh, uh, you join them on um, object ID and parent ID, run the script uh, and here is the column that tells us uh, is uh, disabled, is, uh, if it is 0 it means it is uh, enabled, if it is 1 so this, this that's where the uh, trigger is uh, disabled. So uh, you can uh, have this query I have in the blog uh, post uh, as well I, was, I will put uh, in the description of the video so you can take a look how to find enabled and disabled triggers so right now what we see here we see both of the triggers are enabled our goal is to disable all these triggers one way to disable a trigger is uh, you go here right click here and say disable so that will uh, bring a, a, a red arrow down here on the trigger name and that's how you will see that the trigger is uh, disabled. If you run the query, it will give you this trigger is disabled. One other way around is uh, you can use a disable trigger and then uh, provide the trigger name. Let's say in this case we have customer, this trigger, and then you have to provide the database, uh, sorry, table name. So in this case we have customer. Now if I run this one, this is going to disable the trigger as well. So let's run this one and see what happened. So both triggers are disabled as of now. But we can go, go back and enable them for now. So we can find a nice script to disable them. If you have uh, hundreds of trigger and you want to disable all of them, you might not want to go in the GUI and uh, right click and disable them or write this uh, disable trigger and uh, this uh, uh, query for uh, all of the uh, triggers to disable them. So here is the script uh, that I prepared for you guys. This will be used in, uh, let me enable this trigger as well, uh, customer on the, so we are on the customer, let's enable it. Now we both have the enable trigger. Uh, I have uh, prepared this script. Uh, what this script is uh, doing, uh, this is using, first of all, you have to provide the database name on which you want to disable all the triggers. Second part, uh, there are some variables that we have uh, uh, declared, so trigger name, uh, and the table name, and schema name. As uh, we know that uh, uh, to disable a trigger, we need this information. We need a trigger name, we need a schema in which the table is, and uh, we need the table name. So this is the information is required. So I have created these three variables here. The next part is uh, I'm getting that information uh, and uh, same in that into the cursor. So I have declared a cursor called disable trigger cursor for these uh, columns. So I'm getting the table name, schema name and trigger name. So I'm using sys.triggers view and I'm using sys.tables view. And then finally I'm getting uh, only the trigger which are enabled and uh, uh, they are not shipped with the Microsoft so they are not system triggers so let's run this one and see what we get so right now we get uh, two triggers and uh, they are uh, these are the triggers and these are uh, the data uh, tables and uh, this is the schema they belong to so we have that inform information now in the cursor I'm opening the cursor then I'm fetching uh, the uh, record or you can say data point or the values for first row and that's going to be first table name schema name and trigger once that information is set to these variables I'm going to the next this is a loop we are saying at the rate at the rate fetch status is zero so we are fetching one row at a time from the cursor and we will keep fetching until it does it doesn't come to this zero so once it will be zero it's this part will not be running anymore and it will come here and close the cursor and deallocate the cursor. 
uh, from the memory so it will keep running if uh, we have the records uh, in the cursor so then uh, next I'm doing I'm declaring a uh, SQL and I'm using dynamic SQL I'm setting the value and I'm saying disable trigger I'm using my variables uh, to build my um, query once uh, I build the query I'm gonna print that query and then I'm gonna execute uh, that query so right now I'm I put the comments for this one I don't wanna um, run this query right now so I'm um, correcting some um, sequence of uh, this script um, right now I'm setting the values for my SQL query and then I'm printing that to make sure this is uh, printing uh, correctly and next uh, I'm uh, uh, displaying a message and a trigger is uh, disabled on this da table successfully the last one is uh, I will execute this one that will really disable the trigger so right now it is commented out so it means it will not run so, and the next part is fetch the next row and uh, uh, save the values of those uh, rows or data points uh, in the these uh, variables for specific row that we will be fetching from the cursor so let's run this one now what we see it is displaying okay disable trigger trigger name on table so this is the first statement uh, as we have two triggers so there are four records uh, one for the disabling it and one for the print what we are saying okay a trigger trigger name disabled on this table so now let's go back and take the comments out of this execute so we, this will execute and disable the triggers so now we ran it it ran successfully let's refresh our triggers and we can see that the triggers are disabled now if I want to run with the select query I have I can check if they are correctly disabled so I can see that the triggers are disabled correctly so this is the way you can disable all the triggers in the SQL Server database so you can use this cursor that will loop through your uh, table name and uh, triggers and disable them one by one this is going to be fairly quick if you have even you have hundreds of triggers thanks very much for watching this video and find uh, the script uh, on the uh, on the link I will be have in the description